Just a few months ago, rapper Boozy Badass was ridiculed by Charleston White, who evidently found the Baton Rouge rapper's legal woes a laughing matter. But the two have since put their differences aside and are now focused on frying the bigger fish, who happens to be comedian Steve Harvey. Back in June this past year, Boozy was arrested by federal agents, after attending a court hearing in San Diego, California, for his gun case in the city, which has since been dismissed. The Wipe Me Down hitmaker was booked on four charges in May, including felon in possession possession of a firearm, concealed carry a weapon in a vehicle, possession of ammunition by a prohibited person, and unlisted owner of a registered firearm. Boozy was reportedly in town filming a music video with local rapper Bully 3, and handcuffed after police officers discovered two handguns in his vehicle during a traffic stop. Despite catching a stroke of good luck in his gun case, the rapper was picked up by the feds outside the San Diego courtroom over an entirely different case. After his arrest, Charleston White launched into a lengthy rant on Instagram Live and laughed at Boozy's legal troubles, saying he got what he asked for, but now it appears that animosity has simmered down. In a still-trending headline-renting interview, comedian Cat Williams accused fellow comedians Cedric and Steve Harvey of stealing ideas, and it appears Charleston does nothing but agree to all of that. Cat Williams always speaks his mind and is a Charleston White before Charleston White. Throughout his career, Cat has clashed with the Titans. This list includes the likes of Kevin Hart, Mike Epps, and also Tiffany Haddish. During his interview with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay, the funny actor added Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey to that list. He accused Cedric the Entertainer of stealing his jokes and Steve Harvey of taking Mark Curry's whole sitcom plot. Charleston revealed that Steve Harvey gets controlled by his wife, Marjorie, confirming what Lil Boosie had said about her earlier. During a past appearance on Revolt's Respectfully Justin show, the host brought up a Vlad TV interview in which the badass music syndicate boss said, Girls keep saying it's goals, but this is not goals. We gotta start giving the bachelors, the men who are running through a beautiful woman like this, the credit, who are not housing her, running through her. Boozy was talking about Steve Harvey's daughter Lori. Although Boozy was initially hesitant to broach the topic again, the 41-year-old rapper again doubled down and said he'd have S with Harvey but not marry her. I was really trying to be respectful, but you know my words come out f it up, Boozy said during the interview. I ain't mean nothing by it but I say what I mean and I mean what I said. I don't want a car after it had eight owners. I'm not gonna take it home and wash it the same. I'm not gonna love it the same. People were getting at me. Well, in my world, we effing, we're s uly related. It's realism. If you think we're taking trips with women and we're going sightseeing, it's just not there. This is the real world. When we get seen with women, we're not going to the movies. Boozy insisted he wasn't trying to slander Lori, but then added, like I said, I wouldn't wife her, but I still would love to have fun with her. With a woman that beautiful, I don't have no problem with what she's doing. Cause I still tend to women like that. I was just saying the goals part I was looking at that different as the goals for younger women. Boozy Badass was a trending Twitter after the Vlad TV interview went viral. The backlash was swift, and Lori fans were quick to accuse Boozy of shaming Michael B. Jordan's ex-flame, whom the rapper labeled a simp. Boozy doubled down on his comments in an Instagram post with the caption, F y'all, I said what I said. He also suggested Lori has been passed around like a platter of cold cuts and believes she is doing what she saw her mom and dad do, both of whom have been married to several men and women before. I wake up to all these Lori Harvey fans on my A, talking about I'm hating on Lori, he said at the time. Why would I want to hate on Lori for? I just say y'all got it F it up saying let's go. If you say in let's go, that means you want your daughter to F7 or 8, 9N in a couple months in the industry. He added, if that's cool with you for your daughter doing that, then I can't say S. But what's wrong with y'all MFs is, y'all salute the woman who gets passed around. But y'all dog the woman who sticks by they N when they NF over. Y'all dog the real B who sticks by their N, but y'all salute the B who goes from hand to hand. The world F it up. Steve Harvey and his family have graced the spotlight several times. Unfortunately, most of the time, it's been for the wrong reasons. Depending on who you talk to, Harvey is either the funniest man on the planet or a celebrity who is no laughing matter. While we know what it is about him that makes people laugh, a survey says Harvey has some skeletons in his closet, and now Charleston and Bossy are joining forces to expose the things the Family Feud host has been hiding for decades. On the heels of his talk show's big move to Los Angeles, Steve Harvey reportedly sent a shocking memo to his new staff demanding things typically reserved for tour writers. There will be no meetings in my dress room, no stopping by or popping in, no one, 
Do not come to my dressing room unless invited. Do not open my dressing room door. If you open my door, expect to be removed, Harvey wrote in the memo obtained in May 2017 by Chicago blogger Robert Feeder. The memo continued, my security team will stop everyone from standing at my door who has the intent to see or speak to me. I want all the ambushing to stop now. That includes TV staff. You must schedule an appointment. The TV host claimed he was seeking more free time for me throughout the day, explaining that the memo was sent to fix the lenient open-door policy he permitted during his show's run in Chicago. He reiterated that defense a few days later while discussing the leaked letter with Entertainment Tonight. I'm in my makeup chair, they walk in the room, I'm having lunch, they walk in, they don't knock, I'm in the hallway, I'm getting ambushed by people with friends that come to the show and having me sign this and do this. I just said, wait a minute. And in hindsight, I should have handled it a little bit differently. And that's not all. In November 2015, Harvey was sued for allegedly backing out of plans to lease a private jet midway through more than $400,000 worth of renovations he had allegedly requested on the aircraft. Said requests reportedly included custom carpet, a reconfiguration of the interior cabin from 16 seats to 14 seats, custom seat design, and new upper and lower cabin sidewalls, reported TMZ. The stand-up comic settled the lawsuit, but about a year later, he sued the Federal Aviation Title Company in an attempt to recoup the $250,000 he had put in escrow to lease the private jet. According to TMZ, the money was awarded to Harvey by default after the FATC failed to respond to his lawsuit. And as if that's not enough, the legendary member of the original Kings of Comedy is still beefing with his ex-wife. For someone who loves to dish out relationship advice, Steve Harvey has had his fair share of romantic baggage. Take his second ex-wife, Mary Lee Harvey, for example. In 2011, Harvey had to obtain a court injunction against Against Mary Lee after she posted a number of videos on YouTube alleging, among other things, that her ex-husband had turned their son against her and left her homeless. Despite the injunction, Mary Lee continued to threaten her ex-husband's reputation. In 2013, she was sent to jail for 30 days after leaking sealed documents to the media about an incident in which Harvey was accused of beating their son. The comedian was cleared of the allegations, according to TMZ. In May 2017, Lee sued Harvey for $60 million for child endangerment, torture, conspiracy against rights, kidnapping, M, breach of contract, and intentional infliction of emotional stress connected to their nasty 2005 divorce. Harvey's lawyer slammed the allegations in the lawsuit claiming, the complaint is meritless, frivolous, and the allegations are completely false. We will vigorously defend counterclaim against the complaint. Away from his households, the bald-headed comic has also been slammed for the kind of relationship advice he dishes out. The TV host has given so many eyebrow-raising comments about men, women, and dating over the years that people have put together entire YouTube videos dedicated to them. Indeed, whether he's claiming that people who don't believe in God are idiots or that men cheat because women allow them to, Harvey has been accused of everything from being homophobic to promoting gender-normative and anti-intellectual stereotypes. For example, while responding to a viewer question on Good Morning America about why men go for unintelligent and shallow women, Steve Harvey offered a response that remains baffling to this day. He said, If a guy is out for one thing, it's best to go for shallow, unintelligent women. You don't want to break this news to a really bright woman. Hey, I just want to do something to you this evening. You don't want to tell that to an intelligent person, because she'll tell you where to take all of that. You want to find somebody shallow, really simple, unintelligent, that you can run this by and they'll sit there and go, wow, that sounds great. Yeah, you heard that right. And well, he is politically emotive too. In January 2017, Harvey came under fire, particularly within the African-American community, for taking a meeting with President-elect Donald Trump. During the highly charged campaign, Trump was repeatedly accused of being racist. Even more surprising were Harvey's takeaways from their meeting. He described Trump as a great guy genuine and congenial and sincere. Harvey supported Trump's rival, Hillary Clinton, for president, but he defended his meeting with Trump, claiming on his radio show, change can only happen when we sit at the table. If we sit at the table, then we can have a say as to what's to be eaten on the menu. He added, I have an obligation to take a seat at the table when invited. Months later on his radio show, Harvey admitted that meeting with Trump was the worst mistake he'd ever made in his life. So clearly, Charleston and Boozy have a lot of grounds against Harvey, and that's just a bit of it. Even worse for the comedian, both Harvey and Charleston have built a reputation for being fearless and super controversial. 
Charleston has undoubtedly become one of the most polarizing figures in the culture. His online antics earned him a cult-like following that continues to propel his message across the internet. However, some of his commentaries have been extreme, but that's what makes him who he is today. Following Cat Williams' recent expose, fans have thronged the internet, bashing Steve Harvey with one posting. Can we talk about the fact that whoever made Steve Harvey's man units kept their mouths shut about it? Never once did they say, you see what I'm doing for Steve's head? I can do the same for yours. NDA be damned, I would have built a whole advertising campaign behind it. With a second fan adding, I am one that never thought Steve Harvey was funny. I started disliking him more and more over the years. The final straw was the Isley Bros EWF versus. That N thought it was just for him. I'll be glad when he disappears for good. Well, there you have it. Do you also believe that Harvey's time is up? Let us know in the comment section below. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.